exactly if you have uh, some other comment or something it's not clear just write, write us in the chat okay thank you both okay okay uh, it's okay there was also another question regarding uh, in general uh, um, if cp2k for example is a uh, is a um, uh, a code a quantum code that has already uh, that has already uh, a qmm some qmm features let us say uh, inside uh, why what is the reason to do uh, an interface uh, and then was mentioned also that other codes like cpmd that has uh, that uh, has uh, uh, QMM inside, uh, and there is uh, Mimic, uh, which is an, another interface that was devised to couple CPMD to Gromax as well. Uh, and and uh, in this, uh, during the recent year, other uh, uh, interfaces of this kind uh, that couple, in particular, Gromax, very popular uh, classical molecular dynamics code, uh, are coming out, coming up. Uh, so what is, the, in general, the reason why we should uh, make this interface and we should use this interface? Uh, I would say that, uh, in general, uh, there are three uh, main uh, reasons why you want to, uh, to develop a, uh, a new interface that can couple a quantum com code with uh, a classical molecular dynamics one. Uh, the first one is performance. Uh, quite often, not always, but quite often, the uh, the QMM uh, routines inside the quantum code are uh, are let us say not uh, are the performance are not so good. In particular, could be, uh, for example, not so good in strong scaling or not so so good in quick scaling. So, which means uh, scaling with respect to the size of the system. Uh, and so you want to improve somehow uh, uh, the, the performance of your code because what you would like is to be able to do QMM with systems which are larger and larger because uh, it's quite often uh, in, during the year, the, let us say in the years, the, your interest is on systems that, uh, that are larger and larger. Uh, another motivation is usually uh, because uh, um, uh, the features of the QMMM inside the quantum code could be limited. And, uh, and of course, coupling with a popular uh, program like uh, Gromax, which has lots and lots of tools inside to do analysis, etc., can, of course, be very, very useful because it allows, uh, allows a, a user to, to have uh, a plethora of uh, uh, new uh, analysis tools. Uh, the third reason, uh, even if it's not the case for the interface of CP2K to Gromax, but for example, it is, it was a reason for, uh, for Mimic was, uh, uh, licenses, copyright reason. Uh, I, uh for example, in, uh, CPMD, uh, the Q CPMD is free for all, uh, for, for all, uh, academic users, etc. but the QMMM interface inside the code uh, is not free. You have to pay a small, but you have to pay a license or Gromos in order to use it. The idea of making an interface uh, which was uh, uh, totally free as well uh, with, uh, with CPMD was exactly in this way, in order that you could use a, by the way, a modern, more update, updated version of QMMM uh, with the CPMD and uh, that could be totally free. And so it could be available to anyone without, uh, uh, without, uh, any restriction. And, uh, regarding Mimic in particular, that was, uh, mentioned, uh, uh, in the chat, uh, as I, as I wrote in the chat, the official release of Mimic with some support, let us say, uh, will be very, in a sh very short time, uh, probably at the beginning of May. And uh, and so I would expect that it will be announced or on the CPMD website, uh, probably also on the channels of BioXL. Uh, so just stay tuned if you want also to give a give a try to uh, to this other interface. Dimitri, you have something to add? Uh, yeah, of course, I have something to add. So, uh, first of all, uh, why uh, uh, we start developing new interface? Because, as already wrote in the chat previously by some other people, that 
old QMM interface, which was in Gromax since Gromax 3 or even earlier. Uh, it is now uh, have been decommissioned, so it is not newest version of Gromax does not have it. Uh, the second one is that the Gromax now does not support, uh, for now, does not support on periodic system. So UQMMM code should also be periodic. Uh, one of the possibilities was here CP2K because it have a periodic QMMM. For example, Gaussian doesn't have that periodic QMMM. So uh, the third one that this interface, which is developed now for CP2K, could be further used uh, for another packages in later use. So it, it made in a way that it could be extendable uh, to other QM packages. Uh, there is no com concrete plans on that, but yeah, I mean, it's free to develop. And uh, uh, of course, another point was why uh, we should use Gromax CP2K interface instead of just pure CP2K. Well, first of all, I can say you that uh, if you used at any point the CP2K, you probably know how painful it is to set up the QMM system in CP2K. Uh, first of all, your Gromax topology will not fit. Uh, you need to convert your topology into Charm uh, topology or uh, Amber PRM top topology. And it means already that you have a different uh, systems for your Gromax and D simulation and for your CP2K QMM simulation. Uh, and why it's important, I can say you that, for example, uh, since Gromax or uh, since CP2K three or four something, so already more than ten years, CP2K, for example, had a bug in uh, Amber uh, topology rigging and uh, PRM top files, and it had been only fixed in January in CP2K 8.1, and only because we start comparing our interface with CP2K implementation, and we found that the CP2K uh, reads uh, PRM top files wrongly. And uh, yeah, probably everything which have been done for 10 years with CP2K QMM and using Zamber topology was wrong. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, yeah, it's fixed now, but that kind of stuff. And I know why it's happening because not many people are using QMM and CP2K and not all of them are aware of such kind of things. And CP2K developers also uh, did not know about that problem. Uh, so yeah, why? Because Gromax provides a way uh, how, you, at least in Gromax, you can be sure that your force field is correctly uh, used and you have a unified topology for both QM, uh, MM, classical MD simulations and QMM simulations. Uh, yes, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, so already some people writing in the chat that they agree that using uh, CP2K <laughs> is painful by itself. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, more importantly, that uh, we uh, want to provide user, we want to uh, push the QMMM into the larger community, which is obviously usually uses Gromax. Yeah, so the Gromax community is much larger than the QMMM community, and we just want to push that. You have a, a kind of an option how to pretty easily move from completely MD simulation, classical MD simulation, to QMMM simulation with just a few parameters, and most of other will be generated automatically uh, so to something which should make sense. It is not always uh, best parameters which you can use, but it will be something which makes sense. And uh, uh, yeah, as a starting point, but uh, I, I mean, tomorrow Holly probably show you how you should check your parameters uh, more, more, more precisely, but as an initial point, uh, the standard parameter should be okay uh, in 90 percent of the cases, I can say. Uh, yeah, so this um, short answer to the question of the people. Uh, I also saw another question regarding the uh, uh, the old uh, Gromax QMMM interface. It now have been decommissioned, so you cannot, in the modern version of Gromax, you don't have interfaces with Gaussian, with Orca, with everything like that, with games. Uh, yes, yeah, so for, if you want to still to use that, it is possible, but you need to use uh, all the version of Gromax 2018, I think is the last one, yeah. If you can perform that simulations. Uh, a, uh, can we use MKL instead of Plus and Scala Pack separately also? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, if you can, if you know how to compile Gromax with MKL and you know how to compile uh, CP2K with MKL, then you can do that. Uh, no problem. But yeah, Dimitri, do you really want to do so? Yeah. 
<laughs> also mentioned a uh, question about a water model a little bit. Ah, yes, 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 I saw that. Okay, uh, so the question about Gibbs 3 p and OT4P water model. Uh, for now, uh, I would say, I would say that, of course, the T4P water model is better than the T3P, but it comes at a price. Uh, in T4P, T4P water model is much more uh, heavy. It's 30 three percent heavier in 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 terms of uh, computation so you need to be aware of that uh, i mean in most of the cases uh, what you want to do in qmmm so usually what i'm doing personally yeah, you do a simulation normal gromach simulations and key simulations with c3p water and then important waters which are uh, nearby the active site of the protein in qmmm you just switch them to qm so basically you make a qm waters but in all other cases, it might be very important in some system to use also T4P water. Yeah. So actually, the, gen that, the general question that Thomas is asking, which is that, uh, would you would your answer be the same? Uh, would uh, exactly what, what is that uh, question? Yeah, so, your answer, so your answer applied specifically ah. to the water. Um, okay, yes, it will be in general, it could be important because uh, in QMM you have uh, this, uh, uh, for example, dependence on the point charges. Uh, of course, it, it can, but uh, you, uh, in order to leave that out, you need to check how your results are converging with respect to the size of your QM system. There is a lot of uh, papers, I guess, uh, in that uh, sense that you always, when you're doing QMMM, you always need to check if your QM system makes sense. I mean, it means that if you extend your QM system, so you put in more and more, uh, so you, you are kind of reducing the effect of the force field, uh, but you're increasing the effect of QM, and you should check whether you have a consistent result with your uh, current size of your QM uh, system. So for example, uh, I can say that uh, if you, like if you have a QM system and you have several hydrogen bonds with uh, MM waters around, yeah, that usually if you switch that water from MM to QM, you immediately see how your energetics, how your system will start changing. Why? Because uh, typically your QM system interacts much strongly with MM point charges than with another QM system. Uh, you see my point? So basically, your, uh, what will happen if you switch waters from MM to QM, they will probably try to swap with another MM water <laughs> because MM waters have a strong interaction with QM system than QM water, <laughs> another QM water. So uh, it's a really tricky question, and there is no clear answer to that even now, but there is a lot of papers on that topic <laughs> in reality. <laughs> And in general, I would say, uh, I would uh, I would like to add that uh, in general, if you think about uh, how usually QMMM schemes are devised, uh, you have uh, from one side the classical force field, and on the other side the quantum uh, 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 the quantum system. The classical force field uh, was devised uh, was devised really all the parameter of the classical force field uh, force field. Uh, to do, uh, let's say, to take into account uh, all Van der Waals uh, dispersion, uh, interaction, and so on, everything without considering that you have a, Q, a QM uh, system somewhere. Ideally, to do a things uh, in a very accurate way, you should uh, reparameterize all your classical uh, force field, considering that now you have a, a, to deal with the QM MM system, but of course uh, no one does it because uh, uh, would be extremely uh, uh, long in, te in terms of time and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, all the gain that let's say that you have it uh, you would uh, you would lose it in this way. But uh, from the theoretical point of view, this should be the right things to do it. And since we have to reach a compromise, so you can, can st uh, still uh, using. Uh, a classical force field parameterized with uh, uh, only uh, with the classical molecular dynamics, let's say, for classical molecular dynamics. Reaching this compromise is possible, but you have always to verify that what you are 
let us say, uh, what you are doing in terms of convergence, etc., etc., makes sense. Uh, can you uh, can you replace QMM MD uh, polar force field in classical MD to make the calculation cheap? QMM MD with ah, a, a polar polarizable force field in classical MD. Uh, uh, okay, so the question should be if I understand well, correct me if I'm wrong, Shiv. Uh, uh, could I do? a classical molecular dynamic with polarizable force field in place of a QMMM, uh, uh, QMMM molecular dynamics? The answer is, uh, in principle, you could do it. Of course, it depends which are the uh, physical quantity that you are interested in. If your physical quantity are well represented by a uh, classical molecular dynamics, in principle, yes. I have to say that first, uh, that uh, however, I have seen so far very limited, uh, uh, let us say, um, application of uh, polarizable force field uh, in the uh, in the in the current uh, uh, community, uh, which means that, uh, of course. Uh, the class, the polarizable force field are still in development, uh, and so then uh, probably uh, they have to be improved uh, from uh, from this point of view, and uh, they will do it in the in the next year. Uh, but uh, as far as I can uh, I can see from uh, from the current literature, uh, uh, it seems to me that they are they are not still at the level. Uh, the accuracy uh, good enough, let us say, to um, be co compare in terms of uh, of, uh, of accuracy uh, with the QMM approaches yet. Maybe in future, uh, or maybe when, now that uh, the, maybe, uh, the application with the polarizable force will become more and more popular. I don't know. Uh, this could be the case. Currently, it seems to me that is not yet the case. Okay, uh, and uh, I can add here that uh, you can use polarizable forces in principle, but you still cannot study the chemical reactions because bond breaking is still not here and it will be not here because the bond bonds are quantum, uh, quantum uh, have a quantum nature and without correct, uh, correct uh, electron modeling without the QM, you cannot uh, accurately and universally uh, make a reactive uh, force field, not force. There is a reactive force field, of course, but there is still a lack of, uh, there still only works in a way that they are parameterized on. A QM is not dependent on the parameterization, usually. There is also a question about water, QM waters, which I know, uh, Emiliano, at another point, you, you discussed uh, how to deal with QM waters maybe relieving or, or the site uh, of interest just above I think the effect of water in the QM region for my point of interest suppose that some frames are at 10 waters at some other frame there are 20 waters on my side okay uh, yes this is the question on un, un mesh uh, regarding the fact that uh, the, the quantum uh, box usually in the schemes for example that you have seen uh, in the QMM scheme that you have seen uh, in um, in uh, the presentation uh, in the second lecture uh, has a fixed uh, quantum box, which, which means that uh, uh, the size of this box is decide, decided at the beginning, while the content inside this box uh, can change. And what happens if uh, I have in my box uh, uh, at the beginning 10 water molecules and uh, at the end, and uh, I have 20 of them, or uh, maybe less, five only, etc. How can I describe that uh, in a, an accurate way? The answer is that uh, so far, uh, any any QMM scheme uh, device so far, I would say, uh, have this uh, drawback, uh, and so you have to deal a priori at the beginning about uh, how big should be your quantum box, quantum part, in order to be sure that during, during your simulation, uh, mm, 
all the relevant part stay within the quantum uh, uh, in, in, in the quantum box uh, there are uh, there is of, of course in principle theoretically ideas about how to uh, correctly de deal a case like that these are uh, uh, what is the name um, uh, uh, um, I would say that they are called adaptive QMM scheme, adaptive is the key word, uh, to, to work really with this approach. For example, these uh, such a kind of things have been done uh, at a classical force feed level when you have, uh, for example, classical molecular dynamics plus, uh, for example, coarse grain uh, uh, approaches. So to uh, uh, an interface between uh, a full uh, uh, full uh, quantum and coarse grain approach and uh, uh, particle that, flu uh, that uh, are flowing from one uh, area to another. And this has been done uh, in a very, uh, let us say, accurate way. There is a theoretical framework that allows to deal with that, uh, in, that in that case. And the same things we would like to do it also when there is a QM MM uh, um, system and so the, there are these two uh, kind of uh, uh, of parts in your system that have to be interface and where also so particles can move from one uh, area to the other. As far as I know, I know uh, there is not yet a theoretical framework for a QM MM approach that is working. Uh, so people are investigating on that. There are a few groups in Europe that are working on uh, this problem, very complicated problem from theoretical point of view. Uh, I would expect that in a few years uh, we will get it, but uh, uh, no solution yet in terms of uh, treated uh, at theoretical uh, level in a correct uh, in a correct way. So. What are the, the way to overcome a problem like that one? Of course, I told at the beginning is uh, to try to uh, think at your system a priori, how big should be, uh, which should be in the, uh, which content should be in the quantum six, et cetera, to avoid as much as possible the problem. Moreover, you can uh, uh, sometimes in literature, people try to uh, force somehow the system to remain in the way that you want um, uh, by using, uh, by adding some barriers, uh, for example, at the, um, uh, at the uh, close to the wall of the quantum part. Of course, these are approaches that uh, have been used uh, in the literature, but of course, they introduce additional artifacts that have to be deal with in the sense uh, in the sense that uh, all the artifacts that you produce have to be uh, controlled verified that they do not uh, modify significantly the physical quantities that you are interested in okay and uh, i think that's all about the questions in in the sense of uh, yeah there is only leaving the questions about the first practical part can we answer them also now i think well there maybe there's one follow-on from what emiliano said about ah, okay from Un unmesh asked actually so if you did have a case where you wanted to actively track the water so there's there's a follow-on from that maybe it's possible i don't know if it's possible to <laughs> look the problem, at the, the problem is how you can couple yeah the, the problem here you can track the waters of course but the problem is uh, that quantum and mechanical molecular mechanical velocity they have a completely different property so once you will make your uh uh water once you switch your water on the fly from mechanic me, classical mechanics from md to km it will cause a huge jump in energy and what will happen after that well probably simulation will start breaking out you have a temperature rising immediately uh, you have whatever problems you have uh, just because you swapped uh yeah so the the, the, the good question as Emiliano said there is no good uh, answer how to do that if you want to study proton transfer actually Umesh, i have a paper for you in the chat now uh they, they studied uh, the uh, transport of the through the of protons through the gramicidin channel using actually cp2k 
so you can also check that if you're interested. But it's channel, uh, so there is a water channel, a channel with waters, and you pull the protons through the channel, hopping from one water to another. So this is the idea. Mm, yeah. 